Trishies Fishies, welcome back to today. Oh, I want to get closer with that actually. Hey, Trishies Fishies, <laughs> sorry. I watch GB ASMR and she does this where it's um, ASMR finger flutters and it's like, <laughs> my hands are like so moist that I can't do finger flutters. <laughs> I'm sorry, I get nervous whenever I'm about to thumb. Sorry. <laughs> do you like the. <laughs> sorry, wait. <laughs> my hands are like wet, sorry. <laughs> and with that, welcome to today's video. I hate how I start my videos. I have just had a Red Bull and I've been listening to Lily Allen for the past two hours straight so I am ready to film. The person in question of today's video is Tana Mojo who is someone we haven't done a video on in a hot second which is surprising because Tana Mojo is so Tana Mojo and normally you know there's constantly videos being made about her because she's someone who we can talk about all the time because things are just constantly happening. It seems that her management Jordan you know normally loves you know controversial things to happen to her but even in recent times let's just say that Tana hasn't really been involved in as much drama. I think she kind of worn herself out over the summer that she was involved in every fucking drama. So now her and Jordan are like, oh, we'll give it a few weeks then we'll be back on it. Maybe that's what's happening. Maybe she's just making enough money on OnlyFans right now that she doesn't need to exploit drama to get views on YouTube because she's making it very known, by the way, that she's making a shit ton of money on OnlyFans. So good for her. She's not going to come back to YouTube properly anytime soon if this is continuing for her because why would Tana Mojo, the one who, you know, very much so cares about money and hey, this is her job, she can, post on YouTube YouTube and get, you know, sconnered in the comments. Is that a dairy phrase? Do you know what that means? Anyway, sconnered in the comments whenever she can just upload to OnlyFans and people have to pay to see it on there. Like, you just watch a video on YouTube, but you can still comment, hey, so, huh, oof, okay, a little bit of an intro. Tana, however, has been getting called out and getting dragged by, do you want to guess? Her own fans. Like, the ones that are still supporting her are the ones calling her right in this. And you're probably like, what has she done that's making her own supporters turn on her? Well, quite frankly, she has completely changed her personality. And she's changed the content in which she puts out in the universe. Ever since Colin and Simply Nessa kind of exposed her this summer and she didn't handle that properly, I feel like Tana Mojo has kind of been, especially in an online sense, a shell of what she used to be. Now, she could have completely avoided having to do any of that by proper, you know, taking accountability and apologizing to Colin and Simply Nessa and not being shady behind the scenes and not doing that god-awful apology video and doing one that she actually means, you know, not one where she sounds like a fucking robot. You know a long overdue apology where she was like cut, 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 like jump cuts all over the place and it was like a script and she sounded like a robot. She got so much backlash from it that she had to apologize for sounding like a robot, but she said she wanted to do the video, you know, apologizing for microaggressive behavior with no emotion. Okay, queen. Personally, ever since that, I have not heard a lot from Tana Mojo. She seems to have just been silent on all social medias, but then I realized that she's been actually really active on OnlyFans, and here's the thing. She doesn't have to read, like, hate comments or criticism comments, whatever you want to, you know, describe it as, when she's on OnlyFans, and if she does, she's like, y'all are paying $25 a month to send me a hate comment, so who's winning? And, you know, in that retrospect, get your bag, get your head. That didn't rhyme. Get your head, get your... Get your head, get your... Sled. That's Santa's... Get your, get your bag, get your hag, no, it's like get your, get your head, get your bread, get your head and get your bread. Get your bread, get your head and get out of there. I don't know what the third one is, but just get the fuck out of there because I'm tired of thinking about it. Now let's get into the reason Tana Mojo has been getting called out. Now, for a little bit of reference, I have to say, because it'll make my following sentences make more sense. I, in preparation of doing this video, kind of went through a deep dive of Tana Mojo's content and watched some of her older content, which was more vulgar story times, which is kind of stuff that were like, ugh, about the YouTube terms of service, whether they would be allowed nowadays, but hey, maybe they would still be allowed. Back then, she was a lot more vulgar, and you could say and argue that she's like that now. Not when you're watching that video. She's talking about being fucked by a toothbrush. She's talking about like this crazy bitch in a hair salon. She's very dramatized her stalker and her stalker being locked away and her smoking weed with Selena Gomez. Like there's a lot of just fabricated stories. But that was a very popular peak in YouTube that people loved. You know, a crazy blonde girl who was, you know, white and just loud and you know, that crazy white bitch friend. You know, you have, you know, those like staple white blonde bitches. You know those ones who just hang out at Starbucks and type on their MacBooks and, you know, like, shake their keys of their car that they can drive? That was Tana Mojo. And the thing was, when watching some of her older videos, she was, like, you know, the typical white blonde bitch. But on top of that, she was kind of a bit more quirky. No. That's the thing that made Tana Mojo very interesting, and whenever I was watching these videos, being like, it's very clear why she grew on this platform. 
she said many times in these videos that she wasn't going to be the sellout white bitch on YouTube. She chose a bunch of different words that I'm not going to say, but she basically said multiple times in all these videos to her subscribers, her loving subscribers, that she was never going to be that sellout YouTuber. And then whenever I watch her recent content, she has became that white bitch sellout YouTuber that she said she was never going to be, and the one that she spent the start of her career building up her fan base, making fun of. So, obviously, there's a little bit of a switch there. So I'm just giving you a little bit of context. Then, in like the middle of Tana's career, up until recently, she's been doing these vlogs, which haven't been story times, but they've been the length of story time. So she would do story times for like 20 to 40 minutes. She started doing vlogs that were like 20 to 40 minutes. They weren't edited that much, and they were just really her authentic, well, I don't know if Tana's ever being authentic, but I mean, for the most part, self. And I have to say these videos were quite entertaining. They're not my cup of tea, but I'm just saying that I can see where the appeal is. Because she's loud, she's always doing stuff, she's, you know, full of energy, she's smoking one minute, and then she's like doing crazy shit the next minute. And it's just a long video where you feel like you're her friend and you're there with her. So it's very easy to see the appeal with that. But in recent times, and the reason Tana has been getting exposed and called out and dragged, I mean dragged, by her fans is because she has done a complete 180 of her personality and her channel. And it's really weird and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. And first of all, with this rebranding of her channel and this content, she has also completely taken away her profile picture of her account, which is a weird move. Keep in mind she has 5.44 million subscribers, so still a lot of subscribers. And in recent times, her content has kind of looked like this. What shooting a YouTube video with Paris Hilton looks like? Oh, by the way, Paris Hilton was like um, doing a Q&A one of the last times and she was asked like, what's it like or will you film more with Tana Mojo? And she went like Tana Mongo or something like, some Tana Mongo is what she said, just proving that their relationship is completely fake for for PR, but we could have all fucking guessed that and we were saying that from the start. Trying TikTok beauty hacks. Then we have the long overdue apology, which was 14 minutes long, 1.8 million views. Okay. Posted two months ago, then she went on a break, then she came back a month ago with this video, which was 10 things Tana Mojo can't live without. So she was... Honestly, I'm gonna say a bit different in this video. There was definitely a change in her personality and she was being a lot more censored, which I'm sure she was probably told to be by her management, but you could tell that she was not completely comfortable filming this video, at least comparing it to some of her older videos. Then is whenever she started getting dragged by her followers. She has this like obsession with David Dobrik, kind of the same lines that Trisha Paytas has, except Tana is actually friends, I think, with David. And she always says about how David is that dream vlogger and that she wants to emulate that. And she quite literally did just that to the fact that her videos now have David Dobrik's vlog intro music and she creates short vlogs like David Dobrik did. So I'm gonna show you then talk about it. So Jake caught me cheating on him, our biggest fight ever. Six minutes long and a really uh, fucking weird obscene thumbnail. I went brunette and everyone hated it. Now I don't know about you, but this is very like a David Dobrik thumbnail. He would be here and all his friends would be here. Four minutes long, keep in mind David's are, you know, 420. Uh, Legally Blonde video, three minutes long, and then this, Logan Paul ruined our relationship, never have I ever, five minutes long, so another one of these short style ones. Now, Tana Mojo actually told her followers that she was super excited for this new era of her YouTube channel, that she was doing more vlogs, in a different format, literally just David Dobrik's format, and she was working so hard in them, and because it's Tana Mojo, of course there was a lie in there, she said she was going to be trying to do them three times a week. Now, I don't know about you, one week ago, one month ago, one month ago, she's only done three of these, and considering she said she was going to do three a week, that's a uh, reach, but uh, when have we ever trusted Tana Mojo? Never, and if you have, please evaluate. So Tana's older content was just these vlogs, as I said, 20 minutes long, 17, 24 minutes, 30 minutes. So she completely went from doing long, unedited, more authentic style vlogs where you felt like you were her friend to these four minute vlogs, which uh, I watched them all. Let me tell you, make no sense have no chronological order. The editing is awful and doesn't tell a story, which whenever you're doing these short vlogs, it really needs to, because David Dobrik really nails that in the head where he tells kind of a lot of stories in one within four minutes because the editing reflects that and it's very quick paced. Filmed on like an iPhone, just not interesting. And the weirdest thing about it is Tana's personality has completely changed. Now, I think this is probably intentional because Spill Sesh actually brought up this point, which was very interesting, that Kylie, not Minogue, Jenner, remember when Kylie Jenner tried to trademark the word Kylie and Kylie Minogue said, I think the fuck not, bitch. I didn't swear, I said fuck, 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 I meant fuck. 
I think the fuck that bitch. And it was that Kylie Jenner recently said that she doesn't have, you know, the personality she used to in her videos because she would rather get attacked for someone she's not rather than someone she is. You know, because she's obviously not the person she's betraying to the media now. So if they attack her and come for her, it's not really her and it doesn't hurt her as much because hate comments can get to you. So maybe Tana is doing that same approach because let me tell you, this is not Tana Mojo that people fell in love with in these videos. And her fans are calling her out for it. I'm gonna read you out some of these comments here. I'm gonna go, they are like ruthless. Holy shit, people say drama channels are toxic. Like fucking look at some of these comments. I'm gonna read them out to you. People are not loving this. And by the way, the views aren't doing any better than her older videos. So I don't really know why she's doing this. But it's just a lot. And also these videos center around kind of what David Dobrik does where he centers it around all of his friends that we know. But she does it with all of these people and there's so fucking many of them that we don't know who they are. And the videos are about her like clout chasing Jake Paul, which I swear she has more relevance than Jake Paul nowadays, which is so weird. But like it's so just it doesn't it doesn't work out in anything. So Someone commented, don't forget where you came from, Tana. Those people are toxic. We need more of your older friends. Yeah, this isn't it for me. It's so fake now. All these people are just using each other for clout during a pandemic. It feels desperate, Tana. I'm unsubscribing. Dude, your content is so lifeless. Like, for real. I ain't trying to be mean. This isn't you. This is David. And you clearly don't listen to your fans. This is just so sad. I see how it is. And I don't know how to word it. Is it just me or are these David Dobrik style vlogs just not working out for her? Maybe it's because I'm familiar with his friend and their structured storylines amongst the chaotic clips. Because Tana's were just chaotic clips, but they weren't interesting. Tana's is filled with a bunch of people I don't know, or if I know them, I don't like. These clips are definitely high energy, but lack any real entertainment value. I miss story time, Tana. What is entertaining about this, Tana? You meeting up and talking and laughing with a bunch of people we don't know what's going on? This sucks. I'ma go ahead and unsubscribe, sis. All of these boring ass generic people. Girl, bring back your story times. This sucked. I'm not trying to hate. I respect that people grow, but Tana, this feels very fake. I liked watching you because you were real and unapologetically yourself. You were my favorite YouTuber because you felt so raw and true. I feel like you're so swept up in Hollywood and I can't relate to you anymore. Kind of sad. This is like, these are, you know, these are her own fans telling her that they're like unsubscribing. Like these aren't just like haters. Kind of sad to see how you disconnected you are now, Tana. You're not relatable anymore. Damn, Tana. If you don't want to do YouTube anymore, just say so. Literally no one looks happy in any of these vlogs. Everyone looks burnt out, distracted, bored, and overall would rather be somewhere else. And here's the thing. Tana, if that is the case, you're all burnt out, and if you're burnt out and you're not feeling it anymore, make your money on OnlyFans and literally come back to YouTube when you feel you can give what you want to give on YouTube. Maybe this is what you want to give on YouTube and you're going to lose a bunch of subscribers but gain new ones who are maybe into this content. I don't think you should have to do the same content you once did whenever you were younger for the rest of your life, but all I'm saying is you built your platform off of that, so expecting everyone to, you know, jump on board with you is a reach, and people are not loving this, Tana, and see, if this was any regular person, I would feel sorry for them because she was very excited about doing these vlogs and everyone came for her, but the thing is, she's been getting such backlash for weeks upon months now, and she hasn't done anything about it or even address it and has continued to do it, which is going against the people who are giving you your money and have supported you for years, bought tickets to your tour, because Tana Mojo went on tour. She literally did a tour in Dublin, and I was like, girl, <laughs> what does she do? She literally told story times on stage, but hey, I would rather her do that than just fucking scream around with all these random ass people on stage that we don't know. I want to know what your opinion is. It's weird that for the first time, it's like her own fans calling her out and her own fans coming after her. But yeah, this is not looking good for her. And the fact that people are genuinely telling her that they're unsubscribing, they're not liking it, they feel so disconnected to her. That's not a good sign as a YouTuber whenever your audience saying that they can't relate to you anymore or that they just don't want to relate to you anymore. Tana, especially whenever you said that all you wanted to be was someone that young girls could relate to and that you would never be the seller. It really is crazy how her progression on YouTube has went, right? It's kind of sad to see. Well, what's your opinion of it? Let's talk about it below. Okay. I love you and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. I'm curious to see what your opinion is on this. Are people being too harsh or do you agree with them? Let's see. Let's talk about it. Also, we're in a pandemic and where she lives has the worst cases and yet she's still filming with all these nobodies. Let's talk about that, Tana. Do better, bitch.